Tonight we will be talking about America as it stands right now, which means we'll be talking about the post-election chaos. Everything is confused right now, and everyone seems confused. Most of all of our, most of all our politicians, the people who we voted to represent us don't seem to know who they represent anymore. Maybe it's the Sudan or Burma. I mean, after all, both of those remote countries got big money from Congress last week. Most of our elected officials seem to represent China now, at least unofficially. But it definitely isn't us. Americans hardly have any representatives at all in government. You can see this most clearly in the COVID relief bill that Congress tried to pass last week. While Americans were getting $600, Burma was getting $135 million. Sudan got $700 million and Pakistan got $15 million. The list goes on and on. This wasn't a Democrat or Republican boondoggle. This bill had broad bipartisan support. In other words, both parties wanted to give $700 billion to remote foreign countries that most of us have never visited, while giving Americans a mere $170 billion. You can say there's nothing new about this. Congress is always wasting our money. But there is something new. There was a very messy and very public breakup between the GOP and President Trump over all this. And that's what I want to focus on tonight. The average Republican voter is just waking up to the harsh reality that the GOP and President Trump don't really agree about anything. It's not a marriage anymore. It's not even dating. It's now almost an abusive relationship. The president yesterday accused his own party of having a death wish. Trump played the part of the loyal spouse, publicly supporting total buffoons like Mitt Romney and Ben Sass in the last four years. While the GOP went around town sleeping with big tech lobbyists and Chamber of Commerce flops. You can see this most clearly with the Georgia runoff elections where Trump has publicly called out Republican Governor Brian Kemp and other elected officials, while Mitch McConnell and the GOP establishment have remained totally silent. Listen to the president during uh, the latest Georgia rally earlier this month. And for whatever reason, your secretary of state and your governor are afraid of Stacey Abrams. They're afraid of her. Or take the, late, the last two major votes in Congress, the NDAA and the COVID relief bill, where the Republican Party simply abandoned President Trump in both cases. This has caused total confusion amongst Republican voters. The average Republican voter is now like the kid in an ugly custody dispute. Trump tried to keep the family together for the sake of the country, but Mitch McConnell and Mitt Romney had other ideas. They think you can't wait to vote for Nikki Haley or Chris Christie in 2024 idea to think that any state or any number of states, no matter how good they are, um, can challenge another state's uh, right to run the election as they see fit. Uh, and also, there's no evidence. As, we've, as I've been saying since election night, um, show us the evidence. And, and what's gotten even worse, though, Martha, I think, is, is the attacks by the president on good, hardworking, decent Republican governors. That coming from the governor who spent his final days in office sitting on the beach while his state government was shut down. That's why the GOP never complained about the problems with the 2020 election, the one China and Iran interfered with, as we now know from Director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe. What they're really trying to do is through blackmail, through bribery, through overt and covert influence, trying to make sure that only laws that are favorable to China are passed. GOP wants its voters to move on from President Trump and has publicly ditched both Trump and his voters to prove it. See, the problem for the GOP is that 95% of its voters voted for Trump. The kids belong to Trump, not Mitch McConnell. And they don't seem to be in any mood to simply move on from the 2020 election and get excited about Chris Christie running in 2024 or go back to the losing ways of Mitt Romney and company. What happened to prominent Republican politicians right after the election? The answer is... They all disappeared. Once the GOP disappeared, it began to pursue its old agenda policy, the policy agenda that existed before Donald Trump. Almost the very first night, they passed Senator Mike Lee's big tech bill allowing unlimited Indian guest workers to come into the U.S. to take the best U.S. tech jobs. The GOP Senate, in particular, had already tried to stop the president from building the wall, stopping mass illegal immigration and amnesty. They even tried to block him from putting tariffs on China. In other words, the GOP has completely broken from the most popular Republican president in living memory. They have opposed the president on every significant policy dispute in the last four years. This resembles a revolt of GOP politicians against their own voters. 
According to incoming Representative Marjorie Greene, who will be joining us later on the show, Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi are crafting a plan to block members of Congress from objecting to the certification of electoral college votes. What does that remind you of? I mean, it reminds me of this Thelma and Louise clip of them going off the cliff. Even President Trump thinks so. These people back here and the Washington swamp. I'm also running against some rhinos. We still got some of them left. They're on mouth to mouth resuscitation. They're just about gone, but uh, you don't want them to come back. The rhinos, the rhinos are worse than the angry, angry, sicko Democrats, the ones that have gone off the ledge. 